Tom Green used to be at the top. In an effort to figure out what happened to him, I decided to go through his filmography to find out exactly where his career fell off. Stay tuned to the end to find out everything that happens in every single movie starring Tom Green. Love him or hate him, Tom Green at one point was a superstar. In the mid-90s, he started The Tom Green Show on a public access channel in Canada. This show was so successful that it eventually landed him on MTV. <laughs> it was a variety sketch show, but most of the sketches were just him in public making people as uncomfortable as possible. He would also prank his parents all the time. So to show my parents how much I love them, I've turned my parents' vehicle into the slut mobile. This show along with Jackass were essentially the pioneers of the prank style shows. A lot of shitty prank YouTubers should really thank Tom Green for the path that he's created for them. He's a pioneer of many things that he doesn't really get the credit for. In 2006, he started what would now be considered a video podcast, but they weren't really around at the time. Most people didn't even have high speed internet yet. He was way ahead of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. It is 801. You're watching Tom Green Live. Roll the opening! But I'm getting off topic. As Tom Green's popularity grew stronger, it was only a matter of time until studios started putting him in movies to capitalize on his popularity. So let's go over the movies of Tom Green. Now I will not go over any movie where he's not the lead or at least second or third lead. Even though he was funny as hell in Grind, Jimmy was like, that won't be included. The first movie is Road Trip from the year 2000. Tom Green has a somewhat small role in the movie, but he also serves as the narrator. This story is actually about Josh, played by Brecken Meyer. Yeah, remember him? Him and his girlfriend were forced into a long distance relationship after graduating high school. All of this due to them attending universities in different parts of the country. However, they call each other every day and they make videotapes for each other once a week. But after his girlfriend fails to return his phone calls for a few days, Josh begins to think that she's cheating on him. And also his friends are not helping. Look, I've gone this long without cheating. I think I can hold out. You're already cheating. Anytime you pass up sex, you're cheating on yourself. Eventually, he ends up hooking up with one of his classmates. Right before they get it on, she notices he has a video camera in his room and she decides to film the entire thing. So eventually the plot fully kicks in when he accidentally mails the sex tape to his girlfriend. I oh, fuck! Her. Tell me you mailed the Beth tape to Tiffany. Yes! Now Josh has to gather a group of misfits to road trip across the country with him in order to get the tape back before she sees it. The team consists of Stifler as the horny and wild Stifler type. What else am I gonna do? Stay here and learn? Road trip. DJ Qualls as the nerd that's only tagging along because they need his car for the trip. You guys are just saying that because you want my car. No! and the intellectual pothead played by this guy that I only remember from the Joey spin-off sitcom. Anybody wants any water? It's all set. Together they will have wild and fun adventures on the way to Austin, Texas. Like when they jump over a bridge with their car. <laughs> what did I tell you? Or when the car blows up. It's just the wheels. and so on. So this far you might be asking, how is this a Tom Green movie? Well, this movie came out at the height of his popularity. He's even the biggest person in the poster. Tom Green is the university's tour guide. In the middle of the tour, he begins telling the story of Josh and the road trip. This is the setting for the greatest story ever told, okay? He's also part of the story. He's Josh's friend. He just never goes on the road trip with him. But we have plenty of Tom Green. Somebody's gonna die tomorrow. Mm, 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 the chimpanzee says. <laughs> Unleash the fury! The salmon can only say. You are a psycho. <laughs> Back to the road trip, they eventually get to the university only to realize that Tom Green had accidentally recorded over the sex tape anyways. 
After this, Josh and his girlfriend mutually agree to break up. Josh ends up with his classmate that he had hooked up with, and everybody lives happily ever after. Even Tom Green, because this is how the movie ends, him making out with this random lady from the tour. Road Trip is a pretty funny movie and it even holds up to this day, if you can get past Tom Green's ridiculous antics. His performance in this movie was nominated for the worst supporting actor and most unfunny comic relief by the Stinkers Bad Movie Awards. The following year in 2001, Tom Green was still popping and 20th Century Fox decided to give him a movie and 100% creative control. So Tom Green went on to write and direct a movie that I personally love, Freddy Got Fingered. You made your daddy proud. You're gonna be so proud. Proud? Proud. Get the fuck out of the line! The movie that pretty much single-handedly ended his mainstream movie star career. It's a vomitorium of a movie starring Green as Gord, an obnoxious retard, and it's just so horrible, and he's such an unfunny guy. He should be flipping burgers somewhere. So I'm sitting there in the audience yeah. feeling sad and sick. For, for everybody, not just for us watching it, yeah. for, but for the yeah. people who worked on this movie. So that's enough with Freddy Got Fingered. Tom Green was known for playing pranks and making people uncomfortable. So why is it that nobody expected him to make a movie to troll the studios and the audiences himself and make everyone as uncomfortable as possible? The movie is almost like a prank on Hollywood. It is super quotable and it's my favorite movie to introduce to people. I say Geneva, you hear Helsinki, huh? Tom Green plays Gordon Brody, a 28-year-old aspiring animator that still lives at home. He decides to go to LA with dreams of turning his animation into a reality. And you wanna just barge into a restaurant, dress like a fucking English Bobby, and expect someone to give you a TV show? Yeah. After a couple failed attempts at getting anyone's attention, he returns back to his parents' house to essentially make their lives miserable. Tons of wild shit happens from here. He delivers a baby while pretending to be a doctor. <laughs> He begins dating a nurse and they do stuff like this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He jerks off several different animals in the movie. Makes everyone believe his father's a child molester. He's a child molester. And so much more. I don't want to get too deep into this movie because I am certain that we will have a video dedicated just to Freddy Got Fingered in the future. Yeah, remember when we pitched the movie to you? It's 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 a gross out, shock, disgusting, crazy movie. That was the whole point. Now you're seeing when people say it's shocking and gross, you don't want that in there. How, there's nothing left if you take out all the gross stuff. If Freddy Got Fingered didn't fully destroy his chances at becoming a profitable movie star, his next movie did. Stealing Harvard from 2002, Jason Lee plays John, a relatively happy guy about to get married, but one day he finds out that his niece has been accepted into Harvard. But there's one small thing that John had forgotten. Many years ago, he had promised her that he would pay for her college tuition. You get into college and I'll pay for it. And that's a promise from your Uncle John. So now John has to come up with $29,000. Completely out of ideas of how to gather this money, he goes to his friend Duff. Tom Green plays Duff, his wacky friend that seems to be full of shitty advice. You know what your problem is? You don't take your responsibilities seriously. Maybe you should have thought a little longer before you went and became an uncle. Together, they will come up with terribly bad plans to obtain the money he needs. The first plan, Duff owns a landscape company, believe it or not, and he noticed a safe full of money inside one of his client's house. John doesn't like the idea at first, but he's quickly convinced otherwise. Have you heard of insurance? It's called insurance. The insurance guys are gonna have to pay for the money and they deserve to pay. John breaks into the house only to end up being forced to spoon by the owner of the house while he's wearing a wig. He forces men that break into his house to do this because he claims his wife has died recently and he really misses her. He even takes pictures with everyone he has forced to spoon with him. Not very funny and super out there. By the way, this gag is repeated three times in the movie. The second plan, they get help from Duff's uncle. He owns a liquor store and he tells them to steal the lottery money while he's out of town. The insurance won't pay him back anyways. But after being unable to decide which code name they wanted. If he tries to be a hero, you pop him, Kyle. I hear you, Kyle. I'm Steve. They end up leaving empty handed when the liquor store clerk almost kills them. <laughs> Third plan. They now go to a local drug lord for some help. He tells them to meet at a specific parking lot only to trick them into being getaway drivers. Oh, we're dead. Go, go. 
the fourth plan. He gets help from his fiance to rob her own father, who happens to be John's boss. Once when he was drunk, he told me that he keeps about $50,000 in cash at work. The plan goes to shit when her father discovers what they're up to. And after a failed getaway, they all get arrested. And of course, Tom Green blames the entire thing on John. He did it. He planned it all. He's the criminal mastermind here. And John ends up going to trial. But luckily for him, the judge assigned to his case is none other than the serial spooner himself. How convenient is that? Wow, how convenient is fucking that? That's right. And he decides to just drop the entire case and let John go free to protect his secret. So now you must be asking yourself, what the hell happened to his niece in Harvard? Or maybe you don't give a shit because the movie sucks. Well, he ends up betting on a horse and winning the 30k he needed for his niece. The end. This is a pretty bad movie with a few decent Tom Green moments. This movie holds a 9% on Rotten Tomatoes and this score will put the nail in the coffin of Tom Green's mainstream movie career because he would go three years without a leading role. In 2005, he returned in Bob the Butler, a family movie that premiered on the Disney Channel. Bob the Butler, world television premiere Sunday at 8, 7 central only on Disney Channel. Yep, you've heard correct the Disney Channel. Bob is a goofy loser that is unable to hold a job. After finding it in the yellow pages, he decides to attend Butler School. In only five days, you will each receive a certificate of competence to wait on any family on this side of the pond. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, Brooke Shields is a single mother with two really annoying kids. I'll tell her you hit me and pulled my hair. She has no time for her kids because she spends most of her time working or going on dates with some French douchebag. Eventually, Bob graduates from Butler School. He seems to have learned nothing because he's still a complete mess. He ends up getting hired by Brooke Shields, and together, Brooke, Bob, and her kids will have a good amount of family-friendly fun, as well as some not-so-family friendly fun. Master Bates. Mr. Bates just feels wrong. Indeed. But little by little, they all kind of fall in love with Bob. The kids really like him because he spends a lot of time with them and gives them advice. Brooke also likes him because he brings out the best out of her children. Things were great until one day Bob fucks it up and gets fired. I have to let you go, Bob. I'll pay you to the end of the month, but I want you to leave in the morning. Now he's back at his shitty apartment, but her kids still visit him for advice every now and then. Bob. Can you teach me how to sew? I want to be good at something. Of course you do. And eventually, Brooke Shields comes around too because she realizes that Bob is the perfect boyfriend she was looking for. The end. The movie was originally meant to have a PG-13 rating, but it was cut down to a PG rating once the decision to premiere in the Disney Channel was made. This is the most subdued Tom Green has probably ever been. He still has his moments here and there, but they're just not the same. The year 2008 will bring us two Tom Green movies. The first one is Shred, which is pretty much unwatchable. Maybe if I were a fan of snowboarding, I'd dig it, but I really didn't at all. It pretty much follows two washed up ex-pro snowboarders. They decided to start a snowboard camp to maybe reach the top of snowboarding once again, this time as coaches. So they're just two losers that learn some lessons from the kids they teach along the way. Tom Green plays the head of the National Snowboard Association, who's trying to stop them at all costs. There aren't really any classic Tom Green moments in this one, and it just comes off as a basic extreme sports movie from the early 2000s. Dave England, one of the least famous guys from the Jackass crew, stars in this one. He is an awful actor. I have no idea why someone would cast him as a lead. Thanks. I feel much better. I coached the fuck out of that kid. You're a good coach. I'm not gonna deny it. You couldn't stop us from riding, so you fuck us with this shit? A sports cliche? Come on, Eddie. Hey, we're not idiots. We're Max and Eddie. We rule. Turns out they're only interested in me because I'm a loser. They have that right. Apparently this is a sequel released in 2009 and I'm not even gonna try to watch that one. The second movie from that year was Freezer Burn, The Invasion of Laxdale. This seems like a masterpiece after watching Shred. Tom Green plays a former hockey player that lives in a trailer along with his dog. No one in the town respects him. If you go in this town, thinks I'm a retard. 
because he lost some sort of hockey final or something. Eventually, aliens arrive into town disguised as a Dutch oil company. Their plan is to use crop circles to heat up the earth and eventually turn the entire planet into a vacation resort for aliens, all while enslaving the entire human race. Those fuckers. We're gonna be a goddamn alien club med. But it's up to Tom Green to step up and save his town, regardless of the fact that they all hate him. He gets help from Gina, a new waitress in town that has had an encounter with aliens before. That's why I came to Laxdale, to get some payback. After discovering that the aliens' weakness is anything cold, they stop by a freezer section at a supermarket for ammunition, and eventually they defeat the alien. But of course, in the process, Tom Green and Gina fall in love. This movie is mediocre at best, but there's a couple things I found interesting. One, aliens don't have dicks in this movie. Instead, their nose is their sex organ. And second, there's this very, very bizarre, almost sex scene brought to you by Cheetos. Want some? Sure. Didn't have sex for six months. <laughs> Damn. Hello? It's Kirby. From there, Tom Green will have small parts in low budget movies here and there. Movies like Total Frat Movie. There's no way I'm watching that. But in 2017, Tom Green had a small role in a movie called Bethany. I decided to give this one a watch only because it's a horror movie. I could have never imagined Tom Green appearing in a horror movie. Bethany follows Claire and her husband, both pretty horrible actors by the way. They return to the house of her childhood after her mother dies, only to be plagued by strange occurrences. Claire seems to think that her childhood imaginary friend, Bethany, is the one terrorizing them in the house. But eventually, after a fuck ton of shitty special effects and bad and boring dialogue, they discover that they're actually being haunted by the ghost of Claire's deformed twin sister, which she didn't know she had. Her mother had kept her twin sister hidden away inside the walls of the house until she was forgotten and died of starvation. Her twin sister. What? Claire had a twin sister. No, she's never said anything about a sister. They discover all of this with the help of Tom Green, who plays Claire's psychiatrist. But sadly, he is killed in the process as he delivers this information to her husband. After this, Claire gives her twin sister a proper burial, and then they hide Tom Green's body in the walls of the house and sell it. This movie is pretty bad. And even though it's an hour and a half, it feels like it's six hours long. But most importantly, it didn't have enough Tom Green doing Tom Green things. So hard pass. We now jump three years to the year 2020. Tom Green stars in Interviewing Monsters and Bigfoot, a movie that even though almost everything I read online warned me to stay the hell away from it, I started watching it anyways. However, I didn't last long. About 45 minutes into the movie, I realized that it's just a bunch of nonsense that I couldn't even follow. From what I gathered, and that's not much, a professor named Corey Mathis claims that Bigfoot killed his wife. So he's hunting him down for revenge. At the same time, Tom Green plays a forest ranger that is trying to protect the creature at all costs. The whole movie is just a series of events slash jokes with no punchlines, or at least no funny ones. Drop them draws, baby. This is gonna hurt. <sighs> Look at this thing. Do you see the face? Forest creature, it's our responsibility to scoop him up. I'm pretty sure that's a city raccoon. And the movie chooses to constantly introduce new characters for absolutely no reason. All it does is create confusion and hide the very thin plot. The movie's runtime is about an hour and 50 minutes, so almost two hours. Now, I only watched the first 45 minutes and the plot barely advanced at all. So I don't see much of anything happening in the rest of the movie that's worth my time. You made me lose my concentration, that's what. The only thing you can concentrate on is pushing a fart out. Tom Green began his acting career at the top. He was already popular before even starring in a major movie. Without this popularity, 
I'm not sure if he would ever have become an actor. I really enjoyed his early movies, especially Freddy Got Fingered, the movie he had the most control over. When he's playing by other people's roles, he doesn't seem to shine, at least in my opinion. I know his humor isn't for everyone, but he didn't get as popular as he once was without people really enjoying what he did. Currently, Tom Green seems to do low budget movies here and there. However, at one point, he had the potential to become a great comedic actor. But maybe his weirdness or his inability to push himself to be more marketable was his downfall. Or maybe even his ego. Because when you're at the top, sometimes you think you'll be there forever. He chose to be himself and to be authentic. And he paid the price for it, I guess. And I'm like so like naive and like overconfident that I'm actually going to myself, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to do your movie that's like professional and like, you know, well made and like really, really good because that's not my kind of comedy. You know, I, right. I, I, I'm doing something different here and go, we're going to make the craziest fucking movie ever made. Right. You know, but are you right? saying that that's your regret then? Like, so I think to myself, sometimes I think like, OK, if I had been less naive, maybe I would have done things differently and who knows what would have would have been different, you know? Like, I wish I could have just sort of gone with the flow a little bit more at some times. But Tom Green has had a huge career anyways. He's a talented musician, a pioneer of podcasting and pranking, and went on to be very successful doing stand-up comedy. And he did all of this while being himself and being authentic. He did what he thought was funny and not what the masses would find funny. And that's it for Tom Green's forgotten filmography. Subscribe and hit that like button if you want, or if you don't, don't do it. It's your life. Do whatever you want to do. Bye. Tom, when Tom that, Green was on, I couldn't, it, it was stuff I couldn't even believe. Tom Green did Oprah. Wow. <laughs> Oprah. Did he really? Yes. Oprah was like, we're going to, like, this, it was such a phenomenal what was going on. The show was so big. He milked that, a cow like, with his mouth. Yeah. But he put Slutmobile on his dad's Oh my the God. His on his car. parents. <laughs> People forgot how big it used to be. Oh, yeah. they, they, yeah, they may have forgotten forgot how big well, that was. Well, yeah. what he, in Tom all Green fairness, was the, one of the man. What Giant. he did was he Giant. did what we're all doing way before any of us, but it was when bandwidth was too expensive. He right. did. He had his own podcast. Access. I did it. You did? I did it at his house. It was part of the inspiration for me doing one. That was Tom Green's. That's oh, me shit. and Tom Green. That was all based on one, one switch he had in his house. I know. He'd just yeah. go on and flip a switch, and the show went on and went live.